My name is Susan Kellett and I, my family have lived in this house. Um, it's never been on, on the open market. The original house, as far as we know, was called uh, was described as a fortified house on the shores of Loch Conn. And the, the first member of the family here was uh, a Francis Jackson, and he was a Cromwellian officer, and he got a grant of land in, in North Mayo. Now, that would be in the 1640s, early 1650s. And in fact, uh, there, there, was, the, the, there was no house here. He lived in the castle in Crossmolina. It was very unsettled times. And it was probably his son or even his grandson who built the first house on the shores of Loch Con, which is described as a fortified house. Uh, but it wasn't until the, six, the, no, the, the 1740s that the first house that we know about was built, which is the back of this, 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 this house. When you go through the archway out there, you're, you're walking into the 1740 house, which was uh, very tall and narrow. Uh, it was three stories over, over basement. And then in the 1790s, there was a little more money, the times were more prosperous, uh, and people were building more substantial houses, and they weren't fortified. So, the, so uh, uh, one of the Jacksons uh, came along, and he built, he built onto the front of the old house. And we're sitting in the new house, which was completed in the 1790s. Uh, the plasterwork here would all be about 1800. And what they did was because um, they wanted a grander house. So this is two stories over basement and you can see the very high ceilings, about 22 feet. Whereas in the old house, the ceilings are, are, are much lower. Um, and so they built across the front of the old house and down the sides. So they turned it from a, a tall, narrow, three-story over basement into a square. Uh, two-story over, over basement and they actually extended the basement right to, to, to the to the front and put a gullies on each side and an air tunnel across the front so one of the things uh, uh, one of the results of that is that this is a very dry house and therefore um, everything has been well preserved now possibly fortunately the family ran out of money uh, in the middle of the uh, 19th century, so no additions were made. So, so what you're looking at is is the old 1740 house with the addition of the 1790 house. Um, and the front staircase, for example, is built up the outside wall of the, the, the old house. So that in this room, uh, which used to be the dining room, um, the wallpaper here dates from the 1950s. But if you go through into the other room, into the drawing room, wallpaper there dates from the 1850s and although it's changed colour it's still in, in, in perfect condition and we'll have to have a look at that because this spring we did um, a big restoration job obviously the wallpaper is protected um, and the plaster work has survived well but we did some repainting repainted the ceiling uh, we repainted um, on the, uh, the back of the doors and below the dado row which had been overpainted in the 1950s. And you also have to acknowledge that we've reinstated the gold leaf, so the whole room looks brighter and, and, and fresher. Good. And that's a summary of, of the house. Pretty well. <coughs> Did much documentation in relation to the house survive? Not, uh, not as much as you would expect, mm. because what happened was that my great-great-great-grandmother uh, was known as Madeline the heiress, and she was Madeline Jackson. Uh, that would be her grandfather up over the, over the sideboard there. And she was left an orphan, uh, very young, and she, was, she wasn't brought up in this house. She was brought up in a house called Stevenstown in County Louth. And her father's younger brothers just assumed that she was a girl and wouldn't inherit, uh, and that they, they would, would, would have, have the house to themselves. In fact, as it turned out, uh, there was no male and tail on the property. All it said was the eldest child of the eldest child. So, of course, she couldn't do anything about that while she was a minor and unmarried. But she married um, a distant cousin in 1834, Mervyn Platt, who came from Cabra Castle in, in Kingscourt in County Cavan. And the Platts were a fairly tough merchant family, <laughs> and they were not going to see the new daughter-in-law done out of her inheritance. So they all went to court 
in the 1830s. Um, and she eventually got the house back. Uh, but the uncles stripped the house of all the furniture and family papers and so on. And there's actually a letter from her aunt saying, poor Madeline, four bare walls was all she inherited. And then they haven't been traced? They haven't been traced, no. We think that some of them, some of the family went to Northern Ireland, and I've tried in the archives there, but I've not had any, any luck. Mm. Now, as it happened, that the, there were distant Jackson cousins who went to England, and I have seen some of the things that they've got, and I got one or two small bits back, but um, things like the early rent books or leases or so on, they're, they're, they're gone. And this was, was it a farming house or a farm house? It managed to land around it? Or? Well, you see, the original grant of land, if you go back to the 1650s, uh, it, it, it's, it, it was in the order of 50,000 acres. Now, I doubt very much that uh, the, that amount of land was held, um, and whatever was, most, most of it was mountain and bog. Mm. Uh, but even by the landowners, uh, survey in which was in 1874, there was still about 8,000 acres here. Now again, uh, some of that would have been tenanted. Uh, some would just have been uh, open grazing mountain bog um, and so on. But in fact, um, uh, jo jo the family name then became Pratt when Madeline, Madeline Jackson married a Melvin Pratt. Um, and he, her son, Joe, he sold out under the early land acts, um, particularly the Wyndham Land Act in 1903. So there were no tenants here by uh, 1912, uh, which meant that there were really there were no disturbances here and so on. He kept a home farm. But uh, there was somebody in the house, there was? Uh, there were people living in the house all, all, all the time. And where were you born yourself? I was born in Dublin, um, and uh, we, we lived near Dublin uh, because my father was a professor of veterinary medicine, so he was keeping the university terms in, in Dublin. But you see, my mother, although he came from County Meath, and Mervyn Pratt, and that was the last Mervyn Pratt over the fireplace, was his cousin. His grandmother came from this house. Um, my, my mother was, uh, came from a house called Heathfield and Valley Castle on the coast here, and her family had a little holiday house down at Pontoon, so we came every year. So I had mayo on both sides of the family, either one end of the lake or the other. And when did you get involved in the house then? Uh, when I came back in the late 1970s. Um, now my, my brother, um, my mother still had an interest in the house. My father had died in, 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 the, in the 1970s. Um, and uh, my brother really didn't want, want to keep it. He, he was a fine art specialist. Mm. Um, and it wasn't, you know, being in the west of Ireland just wasn't his thing, even though he was very devoted to the house and looked after it as best he could. So eventually, in uh, about 1983-84, I took the house over and continued from there. And I thought that the only way to keep it was to um, open it up for visitors, for tourism. Um, it's a lovely Georgian house on the shores of Loch Conn. Uh, wouldn't people like to come here? And loads of fish. Um, and fishing um, mm. and so on. And luckily they, they did. Um, so I'm still here today. And you see, my son DJ is with me full time now. And he's very anxious to look after the house and maintain it. Um, and he's, ta he's taken over a, a lot of it now. And was it in this excellent state that it's in now when you took it over? Or uh, have you... It was structurally quite sound, mm. but it looked very shabby. Mm. I mean, they'd kept the roof and so on. So the house was, was dry and was properly roofed. Uh, but it's taken me over 30 years to get it to the condition that you see now. It's beautiful, I did have to replace a, a lot of the rooms and I lived, we lived with chip paint and tattered <laughs> curtains for quite a few years. But gradually, bring it back. a house like this, you have to do, you, you're doing something every, every year. All the time. All, all, all the, the time, time yeah. Yeah, and there were very good, uh, we've got a lot of help now from uh, the Heritage Council, um, and between 1995 and 2000, of course, there was a lot of European money coming into the country, so any possible grant, uh, we restored the gardens, we restored the, the, the farmyards, and so anything that moved. 
And yeah. is it open to the public now? Uh, when, this is commercial. This place is uh, for um, yes, we B and B. Yes, we do. We do dinner bed, and dinner bed, right. breakfast, yeah. and little events in the house. Mm -hmm. And the the drawing room over there, it's licensed for, for civil marriages. Mm -hmm. It's an approved place. Uh, but we have the gardens were restored under the Great Gardens of Ireland scheme. That's open to the public. Um, and when did you start that? That started in about in 1997. It was formally opened to the public in 1999. And did you have the original plans or did you do your own plan? We, uh, no, we, we knew very much. Now, the layout of the garden had been significantly changed in the late 19th century. Uh, the cross wall in the garden was only built about 1870. Uh, but we knew very much what it looked like. And my mother, who knew the place very well, she did, she did quite a lot of drawings, uh, she was an artist, um, and she did quite a lot of drawings showing what, uh, what she remembered the garden looking like. So we were able to work, work from, from Ar that. Around that, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And were there any good stories attached to this house that you've heard of over the years? Or, <laughs> or did you make them yourself? <laughs> what sort of stories would you be? <laughs> Saucy ones, murders. Well, we didn't really, didn't, didn't, didn't go in for murders, and funnily enough, it's, it's, it's a very friendly sort of house. It doesn't have a ghostly atmosphere. And they have no ghosts? Um, we say that the old butler who was here when my parents came here in 1950, mm. they inherited a butler. They weren't quite sure what to do with him, but he, he educated them as best he could. So we always say when the swing door sw swings out there uh, that, that it's uh, Mr. McCullough on his way back, backwards and forwards in, 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 in the house. Uh, there was a member of the Jackson family who was killed from a fall from his horse in the 1830s. And the, out, in the, out in the pleasure grounds, out in the woodland, uh, there is what the family always described as a mausoleum. But I actually don't think he's buried there. I think he's buried in the Protestant churchyard in Cross Um But he is said to ride around the pleasure grounds on stormy nights on his horse. But as it was the horse that killed him, <laughs> we're not sure about that. And would, he, would his grave not have been marked now? In oh, yes, it's, it's marked. That, that's why I think that he's been, his, his name was on with a lot of other names. In Cross Malina. In Cross, Cross Malina. Okay, yeah. Um, and although um, it's, it's, a little, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little old sort of circular uh, thing with, a, with, a, with an, uh, an entrance to it, I, I, I suspect that it is actually just a, a, a memorial rather mm. than... Rather than the garden was in the Westport Garden Trail one year, uh, when you'd well, be open we for... we tried years ago, uh, by myself and a few others, to, to set up a West of Ireland Garden mm. Trail. Very hard to do, the, the distances are really too great. There, yeah. uh, and there was myself, there was Strokestown House, there was Kyle Moore Abbey, there were various gardens that, that around Turlock Park, you can see where they were restoring the garden, all at the same time, the great, great gardens scheme but the distances were too too great mm -hmm. and although we tried quite hard it, 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 it did, didn't really take so what we find now because there's a little heritage center out there one, one of the yards has been taken over it's a community development company they do family history research they put on exhibitions they're the entrance to, to the, the gardens mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and that's very popular yeah because the Westport Garden Trail is popular now it's uh, like you have 12 or 14 gardens every year now. yes and yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's encouraging gardens as well, isn't it? Yes, you know? it, 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 it is. But when you listed out them gardens that there, the, uh, this one and you know, Kylemore Abbey and all these places, mm -hmm. we have fantastic gardens around really, haven't we? Y yes. We have. Y yes. And they're being restored, yes. aren't they? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time.